um, first off, just start off talking about all that you've accomplished in the amateurs. Okay. Uh, my name's Mark Castro, and 13-time national champion. Um, I recently won my second amateur world championship in St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, I, I started boxing at the young age of eight, four years old. I decided to compete at eight. Um, I'm one of the the only the second person, second American boxer to win two amateur world champions. Chips uh, followed by Shakur Stevenson. No, I, I repeat it like Shakur Stevenson, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty good company, man, because he won an Olympic, an Olympic medal. Or you kind of, I know you're out in Colorado right now, training at Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center. Yes, I, I just I recently came back home for a couple, uh, oh. a couple weeks. I think like a week, and then I'll fly back out again. What's that like? Um, you're a high schooler, but you're, or are you finishing up high school? Yes, I'm actually finishing up now. Uh, my senior, my last semester. Um, and training in Colorado, it's, it's great. Uh, Shakur was out there. And I'm the youngest one out there since I'm still on the youth team, but they have me since they have me training with the league team. Since I'm like. They're on my, I already know them, and they just want me to be out there, like, be with the, at the Olympic Training Center. Well, that's quite a compliment when they're basically saying you're so good at what you do, we just want you out here, you know? Yes, it feels good. I, I want to be out there because I like to focus on boxing. Like, honestly, here, and like, when I'm at home, like, there's a lot of distractions, like, like, not like family like there's distractions when even the tiniest things like going to school and like doing homework like friends going out like little things that could come up but over there it's just like college atmosphere but for boxing so it's much more like serious and like a job like you you're not just gonna go to the movies eat pizza and then train boxing yeah um you you could do that as you could do that like to go out and everything, but it's it's gonna show off like in the ring. You're over there to train, train three times a day. If you want to go out, you can still go out, but it's on your. You're gonna if you want to mess up, then you you can mess up. Like you're on your own. So it's basically like you're allowed to mess up, but you're gonna pay for it. Yeah, like if it's like eating and like making the weight, or like going out, like you're gonna see it in the next practice, like at. Like, you might show up late, or you might show up sleepy, you might show up out of it, something. So I take it uh, that you're very competitive, so you're not going to do any of those things because you don't ever want to show a uh, competitive disadvantage. Yes, especially especially when I'm out there with uh, other top athletes. Like, I show up, like, like, 20 minutes early to practice, like, everything. All the other things, because the coaches see that, and I'm trying to show them that I really want to do this. Okay, and I've always compared you to uh, Gennady Golovkin, kind of, with how uh, you fight. How would you compare yourself? What fighter would you say that your fighting style is resembling? Um, yes, uh, I, I, I think uh, Gennady Golovkin, but with a mix with a Terrence Crawford. Uh, because Terrence Crawford adjusts in the rounds and adjusts to opponent during the fight. He switches up southpaw, and I, I did that in Russia. And I just compare myself to like, like uh, Terence Crawford, Gennady Golovkin, and like I'm trying to work on like trying to work on just be more uh, uh, different like dimensions and not just be a pressure fighter. No, I get what you're saying because. Um... At a certain point, there's going to be a guy that moves around, and I know you've had some fights over these past couple of years where guys have tried to trick you using deception, using distance, and you had to make those adjustments. One fight in particular is, uh, I think his name is Keyshawn. You you showed adjustments in that fight, and I see that. Yeah, um, that's like one of the hardest things about like being champion. Like when you're on top, like like you're the target, and the people like uh, uh, people that are trying to beat you, they they only can see you. Like I don't have like I have like like twenty guys watching me and trying to beat me, like making a game plan. And 
I got a trick for all those 20 guys. So that's And like you don't even part. know who they are sometimes. Yeah, and then you don't know what they've been training or... Like the Keyshawn fight, I made a lot of adjustments and uh, and I was uh, I was ready for that fight. And uh, I knew that he was going to be uh, like... Be uh, very like motion, motion, uh, being mobile in the ring and uh, trying to use his distance and counter attacks and all the all the all his defensive skills. No, I hear you. Um, I don't know. I've I've always thought very highly of you as a fighter. I've been hearing about you forever in the Fresno area. You go to all these shows. Um, what was it like when you had the WBC belt and you get to walk around with it? After winning it, the WBC belt. Yeah, uh, it was like right when I got it, it was like it was like quite an accomplishment. And then like WBC was posting about me, and that felt great. But then after a while, like I kind of got tired of it. Like not tired of it, like the belt, but like 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 the belt. It's just like not tired of it. Just like it's whatever. Like some of the belt just like flip the page over and I like, keep working. It it became too ordinary. It's like if you buy something that you always wanted and then you get used to everything about it, even if it's the nicest thing, you're over it. Yeah, something like that. It's just like, like I can't, I can't stay stuck on it. Did you have any funny encounters uh, when wearing that belt? Uh, yeah, I look like uh, Gennady Golovkin. Do you want to elaborate on that one? I don't want to elaborate. Um, yeah, I think Kovala told me that. So Kobla was complimentary to you, or was he? He's not like he's like, oh, you look like a little Gennady Golovkin. And uh, who else told me? Uh, one of the other Rob Garcia fighters from that gym. Like I got a, a couple compliments. Like sounded like little Triple G. Well, I, I remember I saw you in Fresno with at the Ramirez thing when you had to speak Spanish in yeah. on the stage, and you you really did look like a baby Gennady Golovkin. It was funny because you really did look like Gennady Golovkin. Yeah, I think it's like I think it's the smile and the hair. I'm letting my hair grow out. Kind of both have like the right smile and stuff. So you're a big fight fan. How do you see some of these fights coming up on the radar? Is there any ones that stand out to you? Um, I was watching Lara's fight. I seen Lara uh, the stories of Paul. I think it was in four rounds. I watched that one. Me, we watched the tank fight at the the Olympic Training Center. We like Shakur, like the other world champion Tiger Johnson. We were going crazy. We had the we had the cafeteria. We had the cafeteria like lit. It was we were just like, oh, what is it gonna go down? Like, oh, oh. But I'm a big fan of Tank now, Crash Fighter. But the the fight, uh, the Bo, Bo Jack and uh, James the Gal. Thought Bo Jack pulled it through. And then the next fight's coming up. It's um, it's um. Mikey versus uh, Zalata yeah. Cannon. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm, I'll be at that fight with the uh, Carl Franson in Santa Cruz. Yeah. Are you gonna be there? I wish I was. I should be there, but I'm not gonna be there. I'm gonna be in yeah. LA. I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to the Rock, I think, and I'm gonna check out some fighters down there. Yeah, I'll be at the. I'll probably be at that that gym. No, not that gym. I mean the the fight. Yeah, the fight, the Frampton, and the Mike Garcia. I'm going for I'm going for Mikey Garcia, and I'm going for I think Mike Garcia might knock him out like the six six seventh round. I'm telling people and, that's a tough fight, man. That's a tough fight. I I I think Mikey's gonna win, but I'm saying this guy that Mikey's fighting is the best guy in the division. Yeah, but Mikey Garcia always brings something new to the table. He always looking better each time and I know he's hungry for that world title and the other uh, the other fight Leon you know, Santa Cruz and Frampton the first one was great I didn't know the Frampton came out of nowhere I was going for Santa Cruz but this time I'm still rooting for Frampton I mean I'm still rooting for Santa Cruz I think Santa Cruz is going to pull it through and what about if Floyd fought Conor McGregor do you think that's really going to happen <laughs> uh, well Mayweather's a guy that likes to stay in the news and stay in the spotlight. Well, if the, if the money's right, you know he's going to fight him. And Well, look at it this way. Um, fighters, boxers, boxers that have been fighting their whole life, 
boxing their whole life, amateurs to the pros, winning everything. And then they go fight Mayweather. Mayweather. And Mayweather look, makes them look silly. Imagine what he'll do to Conor McGregor that's that's in the UFC and focusing on other tactics and other... Mayweather's going to destroy him if they fight. Like, what I was going to say, and like I'm trying to phrase this right, because it's not on Mayweather at all. It's like... Yeah. If McGregor fought Mayweather, would I guess you have to say would what McGregor's doing would it almost belittle all of your hard work, or would it make boxers who are pro boxers who are looking for a big fight at some point would it like dumb that down or make that look bad a little bit? Oh, say that again. The... I'm trying to phrase it, but like I'll just say it. I'm going to talk through the thought of it. But I'm basically saying like you put in a lot of hard work from the age of four. And then yes. McGregor is going to skip the line and basically take a really big money fight with the best ever. Does that, in a certain way, kind of irritate you in any way? Honestly, honestly, I would say it doesn't irritate me because they're stars and people want to see that fight. And they ain't going to stop uh, talking about it until they see that fight, just like the man with Pacquiao. The people got it, and some were disappointed, some were just like, I told you so. But that fight, it doesn't irritate me if it happens because it just puts boxing in the spotlight. Like, boxing is a sport I want to continue doing, and, and boxing needs more publicity. So it doesn't bother me in any way. They're just showing that boxing is better than UFC. Who are some of your uh, Team USA teammates that you, uh, you're you really inspired by right now? Oh, uh, right now? Um, well, the U team, it was... Who was I inspired by? I was inspired by Delante Tiger Johnson. Delante uh, Tiger Johnson. He's good. And, From Ohio. And, yeah, Cleveland. Yep. Um, Cleveland, and then there's another one called Money Powell, Freddy Rojas, and many teammates. Christian Montana. Dylan, the whole team was inspiring. But I remember talking to Tiger. Like me and Tiger, like he hit me up. Like he was like Julyish. No, it was like in August. We made him talking about talking about like if he's gonna get because he heard Ryan Garcia as a first place turning pro, and I was talking about him like just be ready, like you you have like the perfect style to win out there. I remember telling him this. The other day I was looking for the text messages, but I got a new phone, so I couldn't find him. I was just remember him like telling him like be ready, you're gonna win out there, like be prepared. He's like, I can't wait to go out of camp. And then Buddy Powell, like we just like. Everybody click on that team. And I think Tiger Johnson was happy when he accomplished his dream. And it, if I was even more happy for him because, like, last year I was, like, the only one that won it. So I was like, oh, like, nobody knows how it felt. But this time when he won it, 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 it like, it felt like an extra boost, like another thing to be happy about. And it wasn't just you. Champion. It wasn't just yeah. you. It was like you shared the moment with someone that was your teammate. Yeah, and then, like, we worked for it. Like, it wasn't given to us. We had to go get it. And Tiger Johnson is very inspiring to me because he keeps it humble. They're recently signed by Ring Star Promotions. Uh, Carlos Paul. Or Mar- which Pal- one? Buddy Pal. He just got signed. Oh, and okay. Carlos Banderas as well. Carlos Banderas, I, I see him as a big brother to me. Uh, he's uh, I talk to him. He hits me up whenever when I'm out there in the OTC. He just like he just hits me up like a little brother. He, I look to him like a, a big big brother since he went to the Olympics. His family is very caring and like uh, that was giving me advice. Him, his dad, his uncles. It's just it's just a great feeling. So where do you go from here? Like the casual fan that likes li- likes boxing, listens to this show or whatever. What can they expect from you? Are are they going to expect you in the 2020 Olympics? Is that kind of the course you're going on? Uh, yeah. Uh, my dream has always been to represent the United States in the Olympics and win them a gold medal. And I'm going to try to keep uh, pushing to that, to getting that Olympic, that, making my Olympic dream possible. And I'm on the right track right now, but... Um, this year, I'm not on any uh, 2017 uh, USA team, but that doesn't like that doesn't like take away from my achievements. But I want to go to the Olympics. But the headgear thing is like I, I have to see how it goes. 
if it goes good and then how USA Boxing, um, the way they're switching up things this year. So we just got to wait and see. But my dream has always been to go to the to the Olympics. And I'm going to try to go to the Olympics because I don't want that what if. Like what if Mark Castro waited, waited, didn't go pro and he waited for the Olympics. Like I didn't want to – I want to represent my country. And Olympic gold medal is that I heard that someone told me that you're set for life with Olympic gold. It's, it's like it's like harder to be like an Olympic team and you'll be rep- recognized. And if you have the your youth, you're only young for so long and be able to be healthy. So I'm going to try to um, take it the farthest to go to the Olympic Games in 2020. No, I, I hear you. Um, I'm scared about the headgear too because I think it cheats some guys out of uh, good fights. You know, I think high level boxers can can get head clashes and get cut open. You know. Yes, um, the headgears is. I think it was a move by Eva to uh, bring more attention to the sport, but at the same time, they're risking the the, the youth, the young boxers' uh, health in the long course. But it's just to attract more money. There's gives and takes to it, but you just gotta prepare for it. That's you just gotta prepare to be uh, ready for anything you fight. And sometimes it really like it messes up the boxers. Like I remember there's this boxer at the trials. I think it was Damari, Damari Rock. Oh yeah. And then fought Marlon Moore. Kinda, yeah, and then he got he got TKO or KO'd, and he had like stitch, and then they didn't let him fight anyone. And everybody was like scared of Demar, like across uh, for the Olympic Games. They thought he was coming because he won the youth world championships. It was uh, Darmani Rock and I think Kashim Rockman's son, right? Uh, I don't know who the other other guy he fought, but I know Demari. I thought Demari was gonna win that. Well, Demari got stopped by a guy from my area named Marlo Moore from Virgil Hunter's gym. I know that. Yeah, that's probably him. But- yeah, I, I know Marlo. Dion. Dion. Yeah, now now he goes by Marlo, but he used to be Dion. Yeah. 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 I seen. I was at the the, the big training center with him once. He's a very nice dude. Yeah, he's he's a good guy. Uh, finally, before I get you out of here, tell people about all the sacrifice that you've sacrificed, um, just to get where you're at. Um, it's countless sacrifices day in and day out day out um, from not going out to, with your friends or spending the holidays with your family like thinking that you need to go run when people are going out and you have to make your schedule it's it's a lot of uh, hard work and dedication sometimes you wake up it's not when you want to do it it's the moments that count are when you don't want to do it when you're feeling out of it that's when you gotta push that's, that's the hardest thing because People are motivated, like say people are motivated to go to the gym, like happen for the New Year's resolution. They go about two days, but the day you don't want to go, that's the day that counts, because you need to, because when you're out of it, you just gotta push it. And the sacrifices are, they're countless. You can't go out with your friends. You can't eat what you want. You gotta make weight. You gotta train hard when you're making weight, and sometimes you just like. Just want to shut out the world, shut out the world, and then once you get bigger and bigger, you have like people watching, and you got you got things to prove and things to win, and you have the world to get. You have you have a lot to lose when you're on top. I felt that this year. Uh, I fasted for two days to start my 2017, and I still jogged, yes. and that was the first time I never felt my legs. Like I literally <laughs> felt my legs go on me. Dang, that's crazy. Have you have you ever felt that feeling? When your legs don't feel there? Well, I wouldn't say they don't feel there, but I'm like, oh god, I just you don't have the strength the there. Like I just, like I could feel them, but like, let's say like I feel like there's five gears to my running. I feel like yeah. I only had two gears. Like yeah, and it was that's like, like yeah. I felt like I never felt like that, like like weak, but like I felt like. It's when you like your mind takes over yourself. Like you can't let that happen. Like when you're making weight, you're like tired, but then you gotta keep pushing. Like I remember that for Russia, 
it was a hard training camp, like training three times a day. And I still didn't feel I was ready. That's like the most mental part about it. Like, I was like, man, I don't think I'm ready. But then I just, just got to keep training. And then I'll do an extra session with my dad late at night. And then I had to go run in the morning. So you just got to like know yourself. And you have to know when to dig deep. And that's what I did. And I pulled, up, pulled out another gold medal. Well, I tell people that because a lot of people hear boxing is a lot mental. But I think that people don't understand what the mental part is and how hard weight is. Like you only make weight for 20 minutes at a certain weight. You know what I mean? You're literally getting as low as possible at mo- most people. Yeah, and then the hardest thing like about amateur boxing is you're fighting the fighting in the day you weigh in. As well, you're fighting great competition. As not taking anything away from the pros, but the pros, you, you weigh in the day before. And you could you could pick your opponents, and then you have time to prepare for each fight. But as an, an amateur tournaments, world championship tournaments, you have to compete against the best day in and the next day, next day. Just keep it coming, keep it rolling. Yeah, I mean, you can in the pros, you could fight a, a really low level guy compared to your skill set. Rehydrate fifteen pounds, come in healthy, and steamroll a guy in ten minutes. Whereas in yep. the amateurs, you have to fight um, Powell tournament winner, national winner, best from Kazakhstan, all of those guys. Yeah, it's 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 a great feeling because you know you're fighting the best. It's like you know you're you're an elite fighter as well. So you just got to trust your abilities and get the ring and focus on your game. What's the toughest country? What country gives you the toughest fits so far in, uh, in world competition? Damn. Um, toughest country? Um, I don't think there's a specific country because each country brings a, a separate individuals, but I think it's just more like a mental, like I said before. Your toughest opponent's yourself, and once you beat yourself, you can't be focusing. My coach, uh, Billy, Billy Wash, told me he's all like, don't focus, don't be... Don't focus on the other fighter. Just be the best version you can be of yourself in the ring. Because if you're the best version, you cannot be beat by the other fighter. What? And he's all like, simplify. And when, when I was getting more to the, the finals, he's all like, stay focused. He's like, simplify and intensify. So just keep on throwing your jabs, right hands, slip ins, dodging, uppercuts, like all the simple things he was telling me. That really helped a lot. Well, I tell people Kelly Pavlik was a world champion and he could only throw a one-two. Yeah. I mean, Just keep it simple. Pete, all these guys try to learn all these advanced moves. The basics beat a lot of people. Yep, that's exactly true. But um, man, you're a cool kid, Mark. It's been a pleasure to know you all this long, and I've, we've got to do a video one of these times. I got to get my lazy self down to see you one of these days. But okay. Uh, let's get that social media blast out there for you. Where's your social media? Uh, my social media, my Instagram, my Twitter. It's at Mark the Boxer, M A R C, Mark with a C, Mark the Boxer. Follow me and see what I follow me on my journey to 2020. And I got to do a side note on this. I find really smart people or people that are good at boxing at the high level. Yes. Early on, they they get their social media presence going. Like that's just an yeah. observation I made. Like people that are really smart and successful in boxing have a Twitter and Instagram and a Facebook going early. Yeah, I remember as a kid, like growing up, uh, 11, 12 years old, I was anti-social. I wouldn't talk to nobody. I want to text my friends. But then I started getting into boxing. I'm like, I got to start doing this a little bit more. Then I, had a, then I started doing interviews, so I think I had to be like less shy and more social. So now I feel like I'm on a stage where I'm more social and I'm more talkative. That's like the most important thing because you got to brand yourself in boxing. Yeah, I mean, like, you're like, you're a business. You're literally a business. Yeah, you're gonna get what you make out of it. Like you can have all the skills in the world, but if you're not branding yourself, it doesn't mean nothing. That's real. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of gems in this interview. So thank you, Mark, for hey. doing that. Okay, thank you. Of course. No Talk to you soon. All right. All right.